Okay, so moving on, we're going to need something else be, be, before we're able to predict the lift generated over an airfoil. As you can imagine, you could produce any uh, combination of sources, sinks, or doublets with a uniform flow and create a, a, a body of, of, of any shape, but you won't be able to generate lift as a result of that. So we need something else in our toolbox to do that. The tool that we need is the vortex flow. So this is the last of these elementary potential flows that we need to consider. And it allows us To develop flows with non-zero lift. For the vortex flow, all streamlines are concentric circles. that, all rotating in the same direction, and so V theta is now proportional to 1 over R, so V theta is some constant over R, and the R is 0. The divergence is everywhere 0, and the vorticity is zero except at the origin, where it's most definitely not zero. But the way to get at what the strength of this vortex is, in a manner similar to the strength of the source or sink, is the circulation. So to get C, this constant, or this which is some kind of strength measure, use the circulation. At some radius r. So circulation is negative loop integral of p dot ds, which is going to be minus v theta. And we're just going around a circle, so it's 2 pi r, same value everywhere. Rearranging that, we get that v theta is negative gamma over 2 pi r. So that this constant c is negative the circulation over 2 pi. And strength, because the 2 pi is just a constant, is the circulation. So from our sign convention, if the circulation is positive, we have clockwise. Rotation. And if it's negative, counterclockwise rotation. Now let's think a little bit more about what's going on at r equals zero or at the origin. Here the magnitude of the vorticity tends to infinity. So again we have a singularity just like with the source and sink and doublet at the middle. But we can still define everywhere else the velocity potential, which is negative gamma over 2 pi theta, and a stream function, which is pi or gamma over 2 pi 1 r. Now, 
we finally have everything we need to consider the lifting flow over a cylinder. And we'll talk about what that means physically in a moment. But we can now say that the lifting flow over a cylinder equals a uniform flow plus a doublet plus a vortex. So this was a non-lifting flow over a cylinder. And then to that, we add the vortex. So before we talk more about the potential flow solution, first thing we need to address is how does flow around a cylinder, a symmetric body, generate lift? So this is actually a physical phenomenon. And this is done by having a rotating cylinder, simply. So if you take a rotating cylinder and you stick it in a uniform flow, like a wind tunnel, lift will be generated by that cylinder. Of course, this is also true for a sphere. That's spinning. And you can easily name many examples of where that's used in practice, especially in sports. So a curving baseball pitch, or a slice on a golf ball, or top spin on a tennis ball. Those are all examples where the rotation of the sphere significantly alters the flow field around it, changing the flight of the ball. So this idea of the lifting flow over a cylinder is going to lead us directly to a way of computing the lift generated by airfoil. So, if the spin function for the non-lifting flow around the cylinder, you'll, you'll recall, was v infinity r sine theta 1 minus r squared over r squared for non-lifting. radius capital R and as we just saw the stream function for the vortex flow is lambda over 2 pi 1 R plus some constant which is arbitrary it can be anything Then let's take the, 
constant to be minus lambda over 2 pi 1 of big R, the radius of the cylinder. Then the stream function for the vortex flow becomes lambda over 2 pi 1 r over r because of the addition and subtraction rules for logarithms. Then because of the linearity of potential flow, we know that for the total flow, psi is psi 1 plus psi 2. So that psi is the infinity r sine theta 1 minus big R squared over little r squared plus lambda over 2 pi 1 r over r. And this is the stream function for the lifting flow over a cylinder. And so just as a reminder, r equals r is a streamline. And is the surface of the cylinder. As it was in the non-rotating case. So what does this look like? Well, if we sketch it out, the exact way it'll look will depend on the value of the circulation. But if there's our cylinder, the flow is going to look something like this. there'll be stagnation points, but now they won't be right at the front and back of the cylinder. And there's a vertical asymmetry in the flow field. So the flow field is no longer symmetric about the x-axis. And that is the key to generating lift. Because now, if we sum up the pressure forces uh, components in the x or in the y direction, which is the direction in which we're uh, we would define the lift force here. They won't sum to zero anymore. So by taking that stream function, we can get that the radial velocity is one minus r squared over r squared. The infinity cos theta. And the tangential velocity is minus 1 plus r squared over r squared to the infinity sine theta minus gamma over 2 pi r. So the stagnation points are r equals r, obviously on the surface of the cylinder, and where theta equals the sine inverse of minus gamma over 4 pi to the infinity capital R, essentially where this equation is equal to 0. And what we get from this, uh, as I indicated in the picture, is that there are two stagnation points on the lower half of the cylinder. But this is not always the case. As I said, the streamline pattern might look different depending on the value of the circulation. 
So specifically, this is true only if gamma over 4 pi v infinity times the cylinder radius is less than 1. And for other cases, you get a qualitative change in the slow field. So if gamma over 4 pi v infinity r is exactly equal to 1, then we get one stagnation point. at the bottom of the cylinder. Essentially those two stagnation points have moved closer together and now they coincide. If lambda over gamma over 4 pi v infinity r exceeds 1, there's now no stagnation point on the surface of the cylinder. But at theta equals plus or minus pi over 2, so the top and bottom of the cylinder, we get zero velocity at the following point. R equals gamma over 4 pi v infinity plus or minus square root of gamma over 2 pi v infinity all squared minus big R squared. Uh, and if you think about this, this indicates that one of these values is inside the cylinder and so we don't really care about that one and one is outside the cylinder uh, on the vertical axis. Obviously only the one on the outside matters. Now, what does all this show us? All of this shows that the circulation gamma for flow over a rotating cylinder is a free parameter. You can choose any value of gamma that you like, and you'll be able to construct a sensible flow field. There's no unique value. Now, let's think a little bit more about the aerodynamic forces. So, to summarize, it's asymmetric about x. So the lift is non-zero. But it's still symmetric about y, which means that the drag is still zero. And we still have D'Alembert's paradox in play. The velocity on the surface of the cylinder where r equals r, the magnitude of that velocity is just v theta because vr must be zero on the surface and that's minus 2 v infinity sine theta minus gamma over 2 pi r. And so Cp, the pressure coefficient, which you recall is 1 minus v over v infinity squared, is given by the following. Cp 1 minus negative 2 
sine theta minus gamma over 2 pi r d theta. squared, so that's 1 minus 4 sine squared theta plus 2 gamma sine theta over pi r d infinity plus gamma over 2 pi r d infinity squared. So that's the pressure coefficient. Now, as I mentioned in class yesterday, all we need to determine the lift is the pressure coefficient. Specifically, what we want to do, and you'll recall from one of the early lectures, is integrate along the cord the CP for the lower surface minus the CP for the upper surface. Now here the chord is 2R because it's a cylinder. And recall X is R cos theta on the surface. So DX is minus r sine theta d theta. And therefore, we can write the lift coefficient per unit span. The L is thus negative 1 half the integral from 0 to 2 pi of Cp sine theta d theta after simplification. From this, we can obtain that Cl is simply gamma over r v infinity. So the lift per unit span unit in and out of the page L prime is Q infinity the dynamic pressure times the surface area S times CL remember this S is the planform area so this is 2 R times 1 2 R is the diameter and one is the projected uh, direction in or out of the page uh, because this is per unit depth. So therefore we get that L prime the lift per unit span is equal to the free stream dynamic pressure, one-half rho V infinity squared times the surface area S CL. Putting all of this together now, we arrive at a crucial result for the prediction of lift over airfoils, which is that the lift per unit span, simplifying and plugging in the value for CL is rho infinity V infinity gamma, the circulation. So the lift depends on the free stream velocity, the free stream density, and the circulation only. So this is a simple but very important result. This equation has a name. It's called the Kata Joukowsky theorem.
and this is theorem. And this is a very good model. for the list generated. But how is this list actually getting generated? Remember, we're still talking about a rotating cylinder. So one simple way we can look at this is as follows. Incoming flow v infinity. We have our cylinder. List is being generated. Acting with the origin. This is rotating. The cylinder is rotating with some angular velocity omega. As a result, the velocity on the top is higher than the velocity on the bottom. So therefore, we have low pressure on top and high pressure on the bottom from Bernoulli. And so it's this higher velocity over the top which results in a lower pressure which generates the lift. 